the question is still being asked about how Khalid Massoud, who was born Adrian Elms, came to be radicalised. Well, we're joined now by Nicola Benyahaya from Birmingham. Her son was killed fighting for IS in Syria after leaving a note suggesting he expected to die for Islam. Uh, Good morning to you. Yeah. Um, Good morning. Now, uh, you know, uh, you must have um, witnessed, you know, what happened on Wednesday and been as shocked as everybody, but you have personal experience of what it is like as a family, as a mother, to see your son radicalised to the point where they want to, to kill for ISIS and eventually, in your son's case, die for ISIS. Um, what led your son to be turned into somebody that I expect you didn't even recognise? I think there were several things, to be honest with you. I think there were, um, it was over a year, a year and a half period. Um, and I would say the vulnerability with him was the fact that at the time, my husband and me were going through some marital problems um, and he withdrew into himself. You converted to Islam, didn't you, as a young woman? How important was Islam within the, within the family? It was very important to us, um, uh, and also very important just to keep a balance. Islam for us was more about morals and about a way of life to, you know, um, and how we interacted with, um, on a daily basis with others as well within our community. What was important for me, particularly being a convert, was the fact that obviously my family are not Muslim, so I always kept that balance. Yes, they were Muslim, but also they, they you know, my family were Christians, and, and it was about showing them both of those life and how we could actually, you know, live alongside each other and why then do you think I mean was it, it it's just hard to comprehend and you must ask yourself these questions all the time why your son went down such a radical dreadful and ultimately fatal path what what you know how do other families spot those signs how do other Muslims you know r sort of combat what's happening within their own communities I think when we keep homing in, our, you know, going on about signs, it's incredibly difficult. Um, I think we have to be very, very careful when we're saying you need to look for signs because if we start going against a checklist, um, families, depending on their emotion, how emotionally they are, they may go through this checklist and just say, okay, my son doesn't kind of fit those things, so I'll just keep, you know, I'll, I'll, my eye will come off the ball. But I think, but also equally, depending on, we may become reactive um, as parents and think, oh my, you know, and overreact um, so I think we need to be very careful when it comes to signs um, you know, but it's I think what's important is that we can have an open dialogue and talk about these things when because quite often there isn't a sign it's just an intuition there's a there's a gut feeling something isn't quite right maybe there's something you because you know your loved one very well and you'll know when something's changed in them and but, Outsiders will not see that, but you'll have that gut feeling, and it's about reaching out to somebody and just kind of having that conversation, just to either you know sort of have a reassurance or actually for guidance. Your your son obviously lost his life, uh, but before that he went to Syria and he was fighting, he was killing people, um, representing one of the worst terror organisations the world's ever seen. Yeah, as his mother, it's a difficult question, this, but I mean, do you feel guilty of the fact that your son went and did this? Do you feel a sense of responsibility that you, didn't, you didn't try and see these signs and act on them in a more decisive way? I couldn't have. At the time, um, it's so subtle, the changes, and it's over a period of a year, a year and a half. So I, I, um, I think in the early days, I felt, because obviously with the trauma, I felt there was a lot of me asking, my, asking myself questions. What if, and if I'd done this? But in hindsight now, um, especially after all the, you know, the training I've had with radicalization and the, aware, the, more, the more knowledge and awareness I have about it and the, um, of a greater understanding of the process and how it works, I don't necessarily now, today, actually know, I, I actually feel that actually, you know, without that outside help guiding me, um, I wouldn't have been able to do anything on my own as a mother. Well, I mean, it's an extraordinary uh, story. It's an extraordinary, you know, you've lost your son. Um, I, just, I just wonder, finally, you know, he was, he died fighting for ISIS. How much sympathy do you experience or backlash do you experience from what he did? 
Um, I've had, obviously, since I went public, I've had a few trolls um, over through Facebook or whatever. But you get that no matter what you do in life. I think, what's it, regardless, I think it's important that I'm still talking because um, that was always important that we talk about this subject, that we, we're very open and we have these open discussions and dialogues um, because it's only through this and this sharing um, and being very open and honest that we're going to get real solutions.